For thousands of years, people and animals have lived together, sharing love and loyalty, food and fire. Every day, our animals continue to remind us to do what we can to maintain the delicate balance of nature. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, in a special episode of Rescue 911, we celebrate the special bond humans and animals share with true stories of extraordinary actions and the extremes to which we'll go to protect each other. We begin just after midnight on March 8, 1993, in Modesto, California. A woman had phoned stating that she was having a peace disturbance with her son and that he was possibly high on drugs and that he was acting violent. Modesto police officer Rick Pop was the first on the scene. Great! What do you want? I discovered that he was in an agitated state, was screaming at me to leave. And at that time I saw an elderly woman waving her arms saying, come in, come in, in a very nervous, frightened voice. Let him in. Let him in. Can I talk to you out here? He said, I'm not talking to you anymore. Yeah, Attempted to close the door. So and at that time, I took it upon myself to confront him. Get out! At first, I couldn't tell what he had in his hand. So get out of here! Then I realized that he had a knife. Drop the knife, Rich. Drop the knife, Rich. He said, get Drop out of my knife. house, get out of my house. Drop it! And then he bolted and ran. Backup officer Jim Sanders joined the pursuit. I could see Officer Pop chasing the suspect down the roadway of the mobile home park. I radioed dispatch that we need additional officers, then began to chase the suspect in the patrol unit. He held the knife out in front of him, threatening me, the and then he bolted back where he'd run from. As we were chasing him, I was becoming more concerned with the safety of anybody that he'd run across. Drop it! Now! Drop it! Drop I got out of the patrol unit with my weapon drawn, yelling for him to stop, and also dropped a knife. Drop the knife. At that point, I felt if he did not comply with our orders, that I was going to have to use daily force against this person. When we continue... I was thinking, all right, he's throwing the knife down, let's end it, you know, send Duke. As Duke was running toward him, he turned and he still had the knife. Duke, no! When Modesto police officers arrived at the scene of a domestic disturbance, the suspect threatened them with a knife before fleeing on foot. Additional backup units en route included canine officer Gene Valentine and his partner of four and a half years, Duke. All I knew was a guy was running, there was a knife involved, and I could hear a chase going on. I could just tell this was not going to be a good situation that we were going into. I was just very nervous. Whenever I get anxious and my adrenaline starts flowing, Duke fills that way also. We're together 24 hours a day, and because of that, you get this very close bond. He's my best friend, my partner, my confidant. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell Duke things that I would never tell anyone else. I'd heard over the radio that the suspect with a knife had gone back into his mobile home and that we might have a hostage situation. He has a knife in his hand. He's still inside the trailer. I don't know where he's at right now. He was out of control. I was thinking, should I send Duke? Should I do it now? And I just knew the guy's got this knife. Let's hold off. Let's just wait. I didn't think he had the knife anymore. So I was thinking, all right, he's throwing the knife down. Let's end it. You know, send Duke. As Duke was running toward him, he turned and he still had the knife. It was like my heart dropped. I thought, oh, God. I called Duke off. No, no! 
and he stopped and turned around and laid down, which is what he was trained to do. I thought, we don't have a choice now because we've got his only exit block. It was a split-second decision on, do you use deadly force, do you shoot him, or do you send the dog? I charged him and then physically restrained him, knocking the knife from his grip. I could hear Duke kind of whimpering. He had gotten to the bottom of the stairs and he was just kind of laying on the sidewalk. Duke! Oh, buddy, you okay? I went to grab Duke and then my hand slid around the left side and I came up with just this handful of blood. Okay, it'll be okay, bud. And he kind of licked me in the face. It was like, God, he's telling me goodbye. I was thinking, man, you know, I don't think we're going to make it. K-9 officer Ron Cloward had also responded to the call. Ron, the dog's dead! It was heart-wrenching, knowing that the dog had been stabbed, not knowing how serious it was. It could have been my dog. It could have been me in that situation. Easy. We know that our dogs are there to take the ultimate sacrifice so that an officer doesn't have to, but when it happens, it hurts deep down inside. Some help out here, please! We got the first aid kit out of the trunk of his car and started wrapping bandages around the area of where the wounds were at. Boy, good boy, I'm so proud of you. At that point, I was just thinking this was probably the end. He was just laying there with his eyes open. Damn, it was so sad. I picked him up. I said, no, we're not waiting for anybody. Let's go. Let's go now. Duke was rushed to Modesto's veterinary emergency clinic in critical condition. I was just, like, do something, do something fast. They were trying to figure out how many times he'd been stabbed, where he'd been stabbed. We just knew that he was bleeding a lot and he wasn't making any moves at all. Well, it's a pretty decent wound. Two deep stab wounds had punctured Duke's chest, cutting through lung tissue and major blood vessels. It was like he didn't even see me there. And that was the first time I ever, ever experienced him not even realizing I was there. You see how bad he's bleeding. It may not have changed yet, but let's take a look at it. Although Duke was stabilized, after two days, his condition had deteriorated so much, he was transferred to UC Davis Veterinary Medical Teaching Hospital and put under the care of Dr. Janet Aldridge. He developed difficulty with breathing and he was becoming very anemic. Centimeter. In my opinion, he was very likely to die within the next 12 hours. Well, I was watching because he Although Duke was on medication and in an oxygen cage, his condition was not improving. He was alert and not resting until Jean was in the room. I could see by monitoring devices that when Jean was with him, the dog was more relaxed. His blood pressure dropped and that he went to sleep. Better and better, Gene. That's amazing. So we invited Gene to be hospitalized with him. For the next seven days, Gene never left Duke and even slept in his cage with him. We've relied on each other through our whole career. He relies on me for his safety. I rely on him for my safety. And here he had just done this for me, and it was really important for me to try and do something to help him. This says to Duke. Get well soon. You're a hero. We love you. The community support was amazing. It says, I hope to Every day, soon. another box would come, and it would be just full of mail for Duke. There were get well cards from people that had drawn pictures and said, you know, get well, Duke. We love you. Come back home. And I read every single one to him. It kept me going, and I think that kept Duke going, too. Two weeks after the stabbing, Gene got his 30th birthday wish. Duke was finally well enough to go home. All the nurses and doctors from the hospital were there. And we just had a, a huge party. They gave Duke a little diploma for being an outstanding patient in ICU. It was, it was neat. It was a real neat thing. Again, that's Corporal Ballantyne and the Modesto Police Department and that dog, Duke.
Duke is retired now, I hear, and enjoying a life of leisure at home, but his boss still has to work. Duke's become kind of a local hero. He hates retired life, lays around the house now and does nothing but just get fat and think about poodles, but uh, right now he's doing excellent. Thank you very much. The suspect who stabbed Duke was subsequently found guilty of multiple felony charges and sentenced to 11 years in jail. Just to see a happy Duke again and to see everybody giving him all this attention and all the support, I'm like a proud papa. That's my boy, he done fine. He did a good, good job. He saved a life that night, and I think he deserves all the attention that he can get. Corporal Valentine, thank you very much. Thank you, too. Yeah. We want that to go in his trophy case. We heard he's got quite a bunch of trophies.